Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at some ways to use geometry nodes in architectural visualization. Specifically, in creating custom cutouts like doors or this recessed lighting here. Because sometimes the overall shape of an object is fine to use as a cutout. There are other times where you want to cut out a very specific shape for the asset you're using. But you'd like to bake that in from the get-go. So let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to do is bring in an image floor plan that I got off of Pinterest. Once we have our image loaded, we need to scale it to real world dimensions. There's a couple of ways you can do this. If your floor plan has dimensional markings on it like this one does, you can use those to get yourself in the right ballpark. This line here says 1870. If I add a plane and change its X and Y dimensions to 1870, all I would need to do is match up the scale of this image so that it meets the same size as this plane. Another thing you can do is use dimensions that are well known in your drawing. Like for instance, interior walls of houses are about four and a half inches thick. So if I add another plane here and change its XY to 4.5 inches and then move this over one of my walls, we see that this lines up quite well. Now that this is done, I'm going to map out the wall floor plan just by extruding a basic plane. Here on this wall, we have window cutouts. We're going to add those later, so for now, we're just going to extrude this wall all the way across. The same goes for this bottom wall and this door entry. There, now we have our basic wall structure. One thing you'll want to make sure of when you're working with extruded planes like this is that all your faces are pointing in the same direction. To do that, I'm going to go up here under my overlays panel and choose face orientation. Blue faces are the front of the polygons and red faces are the back. So in my case, all of my polygons are still facing in the correct direction. Let's add our first geometry node tree for this setup. This node tree will add the height to our walls. We'll go to new, We'll add an extrude mesh node. We'll turn off individual so that they're all extruded together and then set our offset scale to the height of our walls. Now offset scale does not take a distance so I can't type in eight feet here. Instead, I'll have to type it in in meters, 2.4384. We'll try to keep this cleaned up by naming this object walls. We'll name this node tree extrude walls. Next, we can add in our floor and ceiling. For that, we'll just add a plane for the floor, duplicate it for the ceiling, leaving it just a hair below the top of the walls. And for reasons we'll show later, we're going to go ahead and extrude our ceiling up just a little bit. But right now, I'll put the floor and the ceiling in their own collection, and I'm going to shut that off. The next thing we'll want is our door. Before geometry nodes, I would have suggested creating a collection and in that collection, put a bunch of objects that would act as cutters for the things we'll be putting in our walls, like doors and windows. These would just be basic shapes like cubes or rectangles. You'd then use that collection to drive a Boolean modifier to cut out of your walls. However, what I wanted to do was have the objects be able to automatically cut the right shaped holes without having to go through that extra work. So to that end, I came up with this idea for creating assets that have their own cutters built in that we can add via geometry nodes. First, I'm going to model up a simple doorway. All right, now we have a door frame and a door. Let's see how we can use geometry nodes to make adding this to our wall much easier. We want to put this here as our bathroom door. If we just place it over the mesh like this, there's no cutout for the door. So if we were to rotate the door, there would be no hole here. We do want to leave the door and the door frame as separate objects so that we can rotate the door when we want to without having to edit the mesh. So let's add a geometry node tree to our wall that'll accept this door as a cutout object. We'll add a new node tree. And since we might want to add more than one item like this, we'll put all of our objects that need to be cut out into a collection. 
So I'll take my door frame object and my door and move them to a new collection. We'll call this one doors. On our wall, we'll do an input collection info node and route the collection selection to the input. And then we can choose doors from here. The first thought might just be to add a Boolean operator between our walls and the collection info. But we see that that really doesn't accomplish anything. Let's make a few changes. We'll have our collection be in relative position. This means we'll take the positions of the items in the collection relative to our object, not in their original positions. When I do this, if I go into wireframe mode, we'll see that this wall has been cut out exactly where the door frame is intersecting it. However, that doesn't take care of this center part. To fill that all in, we can use a convex hull node on our collection. And now you'll see that our door is cut out. If we take this convex hull output and bring it to our geometry, we can see what's going on. You can almost think of it as wrapping each item in the collection in shrink wrap, and then using those shrink wrapped objects as my cutters for my wall. Now I'll go ahead and duplicate this door and make it our outside door as well. And there's our doors. Of course, we could do something very similar for our windows. We'll go ahead and move it into position in the wall. Now let's look at another way we might want to use this cutout method. We'll bring back in our ceiling. And we'll hide our walls for the moment. Let's say we want to add some recessed lighting. Say we want 5 inch recessed lighting cans. With our ceiling selected, we'll give it a geo node modifier and we'll give it our cutter node tree. Of course, we didn't name it, so we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll move our recessed light to a new collection called lighting. Our ceiling will use the lighting collection and we can move this light into place. There, now we've got our lights turned on and we've got some basic emission going on. But now we might want to add a rim around our lights. Maybe something simple like this. Here I've duplicated one of my light objects so we can see what they look like. But then when we look at the cutout, we can see that this might cause problems in the future. Because this has been shrink wrapped with the convex hull node, the hole is now going to be this diagonal shape. And while in some cases that might be completely irrelevant, in others you might be able to notice. We really only want the cutout to be around the shaft of this light fixture and not have it take the trim into effect at all. So how can we do that? Here's one way that I came up with. Instead of using a convex hull on the entire input geometry, we're going to do it only on part of the geometry that we specify. We'll specify the geometry that we want to be our cutting part with a vertex group. With my light fixture selected, I'll go to my data properties tab and add a vertex group. Now because I linked together all of my light fixtures, they're all getting these updates as I do them. I'm going to name this vertex group Cutter. Looking at my light fixture in edit mode, I'm going to select just the cylinder part and assign it with a value of 1 to my cutter vertex group. Back in my node tree, I want to get rid of anything that's not in the cutter node group. To get rid of part of my geometry, I'll use the delete geometry node. Of course, by itself, it deletes the entire object. So we need to put in a selection. We can do this a couple of different ways. The first way would be to use our group input. From here, we could add a float input. And what we could say is when that input is not equal to one, 
we want to delete. Now of course nothing changed because we haven't defined this input. If we come over to our modifier, we can press this button and then type in cutter. If we hide our light fixtures, we can see that our ceiling is now being cut out, but only cut out with the convex hull of the vertices that were marked in our cutter group. So this will give us nice cutout shapes. Another way you could attack this same problem is instead of using this, you could use a named attribute. If I choose input, named attribute, and put in the name here, you see that I get the same result. Depending on your workflow, you might like this method better. If I expand my internal dependencies, you'll see that this reads a group called cutter. As I'm designing assets like these recessed lighting pieces, I could always keep in mind to create a vertex group with the name cutter. And then anytime I use it with this geometry node tree, it's going to cut the way I expect. And I won't have to re-specify the name each time. However, that name will be hard coded into this node. Of course, I could drag an input to the name here and expose the name to the outside. But that pretty much will do the same thing as the other version we did. One nice thing here is since this is a string, you can give this name a default value. That way, every time you use this node group, the default name of cutter will be put in there, just to remind you of what you need. Of course, now we notice that we've messed up our door group. So we can simply go back into our door object and create a vertex group. So there you have it, a couple of easy geometry node trees to allow you to create cutouts for your architectural visualization elements. That way, as you're creating your assets, you can keep in mind where they're gonna need to cut things like walls or ceilings. I hope you'll find some cool ways to use this tip. And as always, I hope it inspires you to create something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.